All righty, so welcome, welcome. Um, we're going to start tonight's practice just sitting down. So I'd love you to get a blanket to put underneath your sitting bones. And honestly, you can make your seat as high as you need to. So if you've got tight hip flexors, just give yourself a little bit of extra height, um, a pillow or two pillows underneath your sitting bones. So that your ischial tuberosities, the bones that you sit on. So I'm going to just put my folded blanket here, have a strap nearby, and I'm going to get you just to make yourself comfortable by wriggling from side to side and pulling the fleshy bit out from underneath your sitting bones, spreading your sitting bones apart, like so. Now, if you find your knees are right up here, do slide extra pillows underneath your knees or give yourself a bit of extra height underneath your sitting bones so that you can just bring yourself up and your knees are not all the way up here. You wanna try and create a bit of space here in the pelvis around your hip flexors. So give yourself a nice wriggle like so. And then take a deep breath in. As you breathe in, take your hands right up towards the ceiling, look up towards the ceiling and then exhale and go. <sighs> so it's like you're gathering in all the rushing and the doing from 2021, all the stuff and you're going, ah. <sighs> Releasing it all. One more deep breath in. Side out. Ah, fantastic. Now I'm going to get you to settle into your seat and then start to breathe in through the back of your nostrils. And as you breathe in, draw your energy up your spine. So it feels like you're being lengthened upwards, right up through the crown of your head. Feel as if the crown of your head is lifting right up towards the ceiling. And then with this upward thought, feel like you are lifting up out of your waist as well. So your ribs are coming up away from your pelvis and you're spreading out here. And then as you exhale, see if you can feel a sense of letting go, flushing down through your head and down through your neck. And give one shoulder a lift and a drop and the other shoulder a lift and a drop. And keep exhaling and feeling that inward kind of melting sensation down into your seat again. And I'm just going to get you to take a few smooth, slowed down breaths, where on the inhale, you feel like you're being lengthened right upwards through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, you just feel a loosening, a releasing, floating downwards. Every time you exhale, start to unwind your lower jaw away from your upper jaw. So it's like you have a little screw here and every time you exhale, the screw is just being unwound and you're getting this nice kind of slack jaw. But every time you inhale, you create that ocean-like sound and you pull the breath in through the back of the nostrils and you feel space being created through the vertebra. And you almost feel like the lid of your head has lifted and you're merging with the sky above you. So expanding, softening and releasing, slowing, calming the breath and consciously starting to move into that state of just being very present with how you're feeling in this moment in time. And I thought it'd be really nice to start this practice by setting an intention for the direction we'd like to go into for the year ahead. So in yoga, we call this a sankalpa. And we tend to start every practice with a sankalpa. An intention is very different from a goal in that it's more of an energy that we would like to bring into our lives in order to make ourselves feel a bit more balanced, a bit more true to who we really are. So we always create an intention, a sankalpa in the first person. It's in the present tense and it's very positive. It's a very positive um, statement of what we want to bring in, the intention of where we're going to travel uh, towards. So a sankalpa takes us into this action. An action in yoga, we call this the tapas. It is the what is heating up our belly, creating this, this sort of sense of purpose taking us forward. So I want you to have a moment to think about what it is that you need to bring in in order to feel more 
balanced, more truly aligned with who you really are. And so for a lot of us, this last year in particular has really drained our energy and maybe it's vitality that we need. So your sankalpa, your intention might be something like um, every day with every breath, I increase my vitality. Um, or I always like this one, my mind is calm and clear, my body is open and relaxed. So if you're feeling really tense and tight and, and, and muddled in your mind, my mind is calm and clear, my body is open and relaxed. If you feel like you just need more energy, maybe it's with every breath I replenish, something like that. Um, my daughter was just talking about friendship and connection before, and I thought about um, there is joy in my heart that keeps me smiling. And we know that even just by smiling, putting a smile on your face, it makes you feel joy. So taking a moment to create that intention, that same culpa, close the eyes and breathe it in. Say it to yourself, Menhi, breathe it in. And then on that exhale, feel it flushing down through every cell in your body, settling down into the earth. And again, breathing it in, saying it to yourself in your mind's eye. My mind is calm and clear. My body is relaxed and open. Whatever your sankalpa is, one more time. We we'll said three times, breathing it in and then exhaling it. And then taking your hands into Anjali Mudra at the heart center. So you're just feeling like you're sealing that intention into your heart. And just give yourself a little bow down, touching your thumb to your third eye. And then again, bring those hands right up, deep breath in and let it all go. I'm going to get you to take one hand up towards the ceiling, drop down through the sitting bones, you're stretching that side, and come up and over for a lateral stretch. Draw the shoulder right away from your ears. We're going to create space between the ear and the shoulder. Drop the shoulder right down your back, and then breathe consciously into those intercostal muscles between your ribs. So it feels like you're stretching your lungs, you're stretching your intercostal muscles, you're expanding the breath into the back of your lung. Releasing the jaw on the exhale, and then tummy button to spine up and over to the other side, making it quite wave like. Drop the shoulder down your back, breathe so that the ribs spread out like a fan. You pull the ribs away from your pelvis, you drop the shoulder down your back very consciously expanding the capacity of your lungs. That's the way. And then taking your hands right out, stretching out through those middle fingers, lifting your heart center, squeezing your shoulders back, opening, breathing. Take the hands behind you, interlace your hands, drop your hands down and then back. And again, just lift your heart center, squeeze those shoulders together. Beautiful. Drop your head down now, stretching the back of your neck and slowly roll your head around. And I like to imagine as you roll your head around, you're unwinding all the stuff that might have accumulated around the neck and around the shoulders. Your shoulders are going to want to start to roll as well. So just let your shoulders mobilize, flow, roll around. That's it. Slow, luxurious movement. One direction and then the other direction, just that unwinding, that releasing, and that allowing to be simply as you are in this moment in time, just moving your body. Wonderful. Taking the hands onto the shoulders, elbows out. And then lift your shoulders up and elbows down. So start to wind backwards with those elbows. Feel the ball and socket joint of your shoulders. See if you can feel that kind of lubrication of the ball and socket joint here. Nice, slow, big circles. Good. And then elbows together, rounding your upper back, tummy back into spine. And then elbows back, lift the heart center. Breathe in, breathe out. Let your action pull breath into your lungs, press the breath out of your lungs. So it's like cat and cow, but where I was sitting, 
Breathing in and breathing out. Beautiful, breathing in. Now take your feet out and just bend your knees for a moment. And I'm going to get you just a pat around your legs, around the adductor muscles, the inner thigh muscles, and then around the outer thigh muscles, the adductor muscles, and then down onto your calves, and then down onto your feet. Just give them a little pat. So, and then round your tummy. So we're going to go up the ascending colon across and down the descending colon on the left side. So up the right side, across, down the left side, and just give your tummy a nice rub around. Get the digestion working. Just soften any tension in your belly. Up, across, and down. And then patting along your arm. Up to your shoulder, down. Up to your shoulder, down. Turning onto your wrist here, right up around the chest here and down, right up and then across the chest, just around the pectoral muscles, under the shoulder, down the other arm, and then flip the wrist up, patty, 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 and then loose fists like this, just around the neck, one side across the chest, breathing out, ha, 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 ha. and then onto the other side, like so. And then the fingertips are like raindrops, just patter onto the crown of your head, right on the crown of your head there, a little raindrop pattering down the sides into your temples. Ah, oh, like that. And then right down into those masseture muscles, round the pterygoids, round the cheekbones, down into the jawline here. Really give it a good pat around any achy jaw and then down your jawline like so beautiful take those feet out a little bit wider bring your toes towards you so you might need to give yourself a bit of extra height underneath your sitting bones here try not to round down like this so give yourself as much height as you need to to lengthen up out of your spine and then roll your wrists and roll your ankles massage your feet in your hands around like so big circles one direction and then the other direction. Now, don't let this happen. So you can see how much tension is around my shoulders. Now drop your shoulders down your back. Imagine you have weights at the base of your shoulder blades, like little fishing weights, dropping your shoulders down your back. That's it. And then start to stir your torso into your pelvis. So it's like you are kind of rolling around in your hip joints. Your torso stays pretty straight and you get a little bit of activation through the uh, inner thigh muscles and through your hamstrings and then add in the hands. So you feel like you're stirring a big pot of something delicious in front of you. Keep your toes pulling back one direction and then the other. This just wakes up the uterus, wakes up the inner thighs, starts to soften into those hamstrings. Waking everything up, getting a little bit of mobilization into the hip joints, into the big rotator muscles around those hip joints. Beautiful. Now take one foot in. So this is my right foot. If you're opposite me, it'll be your left foot. And then turn your chest over the knee. Slide your hand down towards your ankle and then just come up and over for another lateral stretch. Remember, our spine loves lateral stretches because we do so much kind of forward movement, a little bit of back movement but not much of this. Breathe into those intercostal muscles. Really feel your diaphragm and those intercostal muscles expanding with your deep, full breathing. And then take the hand down onto the ground and give yourself a stretch up and over. If you're feeling a bit more energized, push the floor away and lift yourself up, lengthening toes away from fingers. Full body stretch, maybe looking at the ground, taking the hand behind you, stretching into these chest muscles and then wind yourself down. Now bend your foot behind you so you're in a zigzag shape. And I'm gonna get you to press down through your knee. And as you press down your knee, let your hip roll forward and come into a little twist. And then release it and do the same thing again. Press down through your knee, roll your hip forward and turn over the opposite shoulder. So it's kind of like a mermaid on the rock looking for the ship in the horizon, coming back. Pressing down through the knee, rolling the hip forward and over into a twist. We're opening up the psoas muscle when we do this, those hip flexors, and getting a nice bit of a stretch through.
through the quad as well. Corkscrewing twist right up through the spine. So slow, fluid movement, and then just holding the twist, feeling that lovely bit of pressure through the knee, right up through the crown of the head. Beautiful, and then taking those feet out in front of you and just drop the knees from side to side. Window washing from side to side releases the hips. This is where we keep a lot of our stuff. So just feel like you are rinsing the hip joints. Beautiful, and then over to the other side. Pull your toes back, so don't let your feet be all kind of floppy. Pull them back, hand down, up and over. Imagine you're between two planes of glass. So we're not kind of flopping forward. If you're simply here, absolutely fine, but try not to be leaning forward. Try to be nice and lengthened upwards, and then it's a side tilt over, over, over. Breathe into the back of your lung now. So my left hand side, breathing into the back of my left lung. Hmm. That's the way. And then hand down on the ground, pulling yourself up and over, maybe pushing the floor away into a full body stretch, maybe even taking that hand behind you, looking down at the ground, stretching into those chest muscles, and then all the way down. And take the foot behind you. Same little flow twist on this side. So press the knee into the ground, roll the hip forward. So you activate your glute as you roll the hip forward and then you corkscrew upwards, releasing. Press, flow, round and release. Again, press, flow, round and release. This time hold the twist, feel that corkscrew right up your spine through the crown of your head. Imagine you have a string from the crown of your head lifting upwards, chin draws in, back of the head also feels like there's a string lifting you upwards. Beautiful. And then just coming on to hands and knees, take that blanket away for a moment. So you're going to need a rolled up blanket next, something like that. First of all, just take yourself into a full body drape. So I like to tuck my toes, bum up in the sky, hands down onto your mat, chest starts to drape down towards your mat, exhaling, releasing down, arms either nice and wide, or if this feels too strong on your shoulders, fold your forearms and just drape your chest down. So you're like a puppy dog, kind of stretching in the morning, exhaling, chest down, tail up. You might need to turn your head to one side to avoid squashing your nose. Squeezing those shoulders towards each other, down the back. That's it. And then untuck your toes, rest your hips down towards your heels. If that's uncomfortable on your knees, use your rolled blanket, place it between your bum and your heels like so. And then just take yourself into an extended child. So fingertips on your mat, wrists right off your mat, Roll the shoulders right away from your ears. Let your armpits face the ground and then stretch your spine. So feel your fingers and your tail moving away from each other. And breathe into the back of your lungs. So I like to imagine I have wings and every time I inhale, those wings expand. And every time I exhale, the wings come back in again. And it feels like you are just kind of releasing, letting go of the stuff that did not serve you last year. This is an opportunity to surrender, letting go of any kind of people pleasing, rushing around, depleting energy, all of those things that we do when we're not filling up our own tank first. So feel yourself as surrendering consciously and then feel the back of your lungs opening and receiving, breathing in that intention, that sankalpa, those positive words that you just created, bringing that into you. Beautiful. Coming up onto hands and knees, spread your hands nice and wide so you feel like you've got your phalanges right open onto your mat, and then just lifting your tail up and then tucking your tail under. So I like to imagine you've got this most 
magnificent tail and you're showing it off, lifting it up behind you, tucking it down underneath you so you can have a look at it as well. Once you've got the movement of your pelvis, your tail lifting and tucking, then by all means, let that ripple go right up your spine to the crown of your head. But try not to do this with your shoulders. It's not all about your shoulders. It's all about your bum. Basically, it's all about your tail, releasing tension around the tailbone, drawing those sitting bones together, and then spreading the sitting bones. The tail is the beginning of our core system. And if we're all stuck and congested around that area, it can really muck up the whole of our being. So as you inhale and you spread your sitting bones, feel as if you are lifting that tail, feel like you are spreading, opening, expanding, and then you are contracting those muscles, drawing inwards. Feel the movement, bring the breath into the body, pushing the breath out of the body. And at the same time, feel as if your breathing is orchestrating the movement. Leave your tail up and then just swirl your tail behind you. So big circles with your pelvis. Swirl your tail around. Again, showing it off. Imagine you've got a massive tail, like a big snow leopard tail. Something really fancy. So it needs to be showed off. So you are, hey, look at my tail. Swirling it around. Shoulders are soft. Elbows are soft. So let the top of your body do a little bit of a, a jiggity jig with your tail swirling around one direction and then the other direction. That's the way. And then knees together, hands a little bit wide on your mat and just drop the hips to one side. So we get right down here into this IT band. Keep your arms pretty straight though, so we're not collapsing all the way down. We're just kind of holding our weight through the wrists, up and over to the other side. So if wrists are feeling unhappy, you can come onto fists by all means. Dropping down. And then up and over again, just release. This time, take your sitting bones slightly back towards about, there's about four o'clock for me, and stretch your opposite finger out to about 11 o'clock. So you stretch right down into your sitting bones. Breathe in, and then as you breathe out, just see if you can drop a little bit deeper. That's it. Swish your tail to the other side, about eight o'clock. Hand reaches to about two o'clock. Dropping sitting bones down. Breathe in, breathe out. Ah, sigh that breath out. Feel that lovely stretch right across your back here. Come into the center again. And we're just going to kind of caterpillar ourselves down onto the ground. Now keep your hands close in, right close into your shoulders and elbows right close into your body. So it feels like you have cricket arms. They're not out here, they're right in close. Tops of the feet on the ground, chin tucking in, tummy button slightly lifted off the ground. Now press the toes into the ground so that your knees feel a little bit activated, but your bum isn't squeezing. So bum stays relatively soft here. We breathe in really deeply, and as we breathe in, lungs fill up, and we just kind of float upwards, and then exhale, deflate down. Breathing in deeply, into the back of the lungs in particular, Exhaling down. So now we're starting to switch on the back muscles, the extensor muscles, part of our core system. Breathing in, breathing out. So you're not pushing through your hands. It's not that. Hands are pretty light on the ground. All the action is happening right in towards your spine. That's it. Beautiful. Slide your hands forward coming into Sphinx pose. So forearms on the ground, relatively wide. Pull your forearms towards you. Chest draws forward, shoulders dropping back. Chin in. That hook on the bridge of the back of your head is kind of lifting upwards. So feel that kind of length through the back of your neck. Breathing smoothly, deeply. See if you can connect into that Ujjayi breath, that ocean sounding breath. Little constriction on the back of your throat, slowing your breath right down. See if you can make the exhale just that little bit longer than the inhale. And then drop one shoulder as you exhale, look over, check your feet are there. Yes, inhale, exhale, other side, drop your shoulder down. 
So you get this lovely release through the front of the shoulder, a bit of a twist through the upper back, rinsing, rinsing, breathing in, releasing to rinse. That's it. Breathing in, releasing to rinse. Come back into the center, slowly come down. Now roll your shoulders back, reach your fingers towards your toes. Breathe in to lift your hands up. So we just feel this activation on the back of the body and then release down. If that felt okay, keep your hands down. Tummy button off the ground, breathe in, take your toes off the ground. So glutes are activating now and then down. Breathe in, chest lift, fingers rolling backwards and then exhale down. Breathe in, squeezing to lift those feet and then releasing down. Try and do them both at the same time. Roll those shoulders back, fingers pull towards toes. Inhale, toes and fingers come up, pull back. Cram the head, rocketing forwards. You're squeezing the whole back line of the body. Inhale, so you can come up a tiny bit higher. And then exhale all the way down. Turn the head to one side, become a jellyfish and just soften completely. Really nice and floppy here. And then turn the head to the other side, rocking your hips. Beautiful, just a bit more release here. So take the hands underneath your forehead for a moment. Chin is tucking in, toes in and heels out. So toes right in towards each other, heels dropping out. So it feels like there's a lot of space across here, across your sacrum. So if you're somebody who habitually tucks under and squeezes your butt muscles, this is gonna feel quite odd, but maybe, hopefully, a really nice kind of relief just to feel the expansion across this lower back and the sacrum area. So I'm gonna get you to soften your face here. Let your cheeks become soft. Focus on your exhale and just rock your hips from side to side. Let your belly be nice and soft. Feel like you're just jiggling all of your jiggly bits. And as you exhale, maybe you're doing a humming sound out. This is called the Brahmahari of breath. The hum, fuzzy bee kind of breath out. It stimulates the vagus nerve. It helps us to release, 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 and calm right down. Beautiful. Now take your right shoulder, roll it back a couple of times, and then roll your hand right back towards your ankle. Grab hold of your ankle. Try not to break your toes. See if you can, if you need to, take your knees further apart. That's fine. But good, get hold of your ankle. And then we're just going to start pushing the pubic bone the pelvis down into the ground, pubic bone down into the ground, as if you're spreading your bikini line down into the ground. So you'll feel a stretch on the front of that thigh, your quadriceps. And same thing, on your exhalation, do your buzzy bee breath out, or do your big kind of sighing breath out like this. Ah. Mm. So these big quadriceps can get very tight. The hip flexors can get very tight. So we can encourage a release when we create that long exhalation, and especially if we add in low vibrational sound. So it works like magic. It's like a little, little magic trick. So let's do the other side. Roll the shoulder back and then grab hold of the ankle. Flex the foot actually if you can and then start to press the pubic bone down, relax your forehead onto your hand. And as you press the pubic bone into the ground, long exhalations, buzzy bee breath out or a sighing breath out, but see if you can create a very long, long, long exhale. Mm. Mm. Beautiful, and then down again, toes together, heels up, and again, just rocking the hips from side to side. Jiggle out all of the stuff that has been accumulating, and then just rolling onto your back. I'm gonna get you to grab your rolled up mat to start off with, and slide it across your mat, just where your bra strap is, so right across your shoulders, and lie back. Now you might need to adjust it if it's a bit high, it'll feel uncomfortable. 
we're just wanting to open up the ribs, open up these pectoral muscles and get a bit of a natural stretch as our shoulders drop down to the ground. So I sometimes do this with a bolster, which is a bit higher, but this will do. Arms out to the side or above the head if that feels okay. And then try taking your feet together and your knees out. So it's a very opening, expanding, heart expanding pose. Supta Vadakanasana, but with a little bit of an extra lift through the heart. And take some big deep breaths in this time. Feel those ribs spreading out. Feel your diaphragm spreading. Feel the breath going into your lower belly. And if it feels too tight, too um, strong a stretch on your hips, just let your feet drape outwards like so. So become a big starfish. <sighs> So this is just a very passive, but very nice kind of restorative, opening, releasing, shoulder releasing stretch. See if you can consciously release the frown lines to soften the area between your eyebrows and keep softening your cheeks and softening your jaw. That's the way. And then, oh, this feels good. I'm just going to get you to slide that prop underneath your head for a moment. And if you find that when you are lying here on your back, your ribs are flaring up, you're going to need to get your other blanket as well and put it underneath your shoulders. So you're on a bit more of a slope. So your head is higher than your shoulders, but so your ribs drop downwards. So what we don't want to do is have lots of space under our ribs and our ribs flaring up. We want to be on enough of a slope so that our rib cage feels like it's drawing downwards towards the spine. So that's going to keep us into that neutral alignment and it's going to help us activate our core muscles. So I'm going to get you just to focus on your pelvic floor and then your deep core muscles. On an exhalation, blow out like this, like pursed lips, and as you're blowing out, activate your pelvic floor muscles. So feel as if, this is what it feels like, if you had a tampon that's dropped down too, deep, too far down, you're trying to kind of draw it up with your vaginal muscles. Imagine you're sucking it right up through the cervix towards your tummy button, and then your corset muscles are kind of squeezing in towards your spine, and then soften it all. Let it all go and breathe in. Like that and then breathe out and do that again. So you're activating, zipping upwards, core squeezing in, and then inhaling to soften everything. So it's a very internal lifting up. Or you can imagine, I like to imagine there's a plunger and the plunger is opened here, the flange is opened, and then on your exhalation, the plunger is vacuuming in and upwards. And as you inhale, releasing back down again. So exhaling, zipping up, and then releasing down. Now, keep that action, but bring your toes together. I'm going to get you to let your knees drop out to the side, like a frog. And then on your exhalation, zipping up through the pelvic floor towards your core, and then your knees float together, and then releasing out again. So exhaling, and then inhaling, like a vacuum up, and then releasing down. And uh, try to keep the base of your rib cage and the top of your hips in the same line. So this is a very deep action through the pelvic floor, right into the center of the pelvic floor, through the vaginal muscles and zipping right up to our deep transverse abdominal muscles, a bit of activation into the multifidine muscles of the back. And we're doing it all through the action of the breath, the diaphragm, working with the pelvic floor diaphragm synergistically together, exhaling, zipping up, inhale, release, exhale up, inhale, release. Beautiful. Take your feet a little bit wide on your mat, like so. You might need to take your, I'm going to take my um, blanket away for a moment, actually, just so my head's down on the ground. Feet nice and wide. Push the ground away and peel up and then squeeze your knees and your thighs together. 
Let your knees go apart and roll back down onto the ground. Do the lifting up on an exhale, so just like before, like that. Squeeze your knees, release your knees, breathe in, come back down. Exhale, coming up, squeeze your knees, release your knees, come back down. So what we're doing is we're activating deep into your adductors, your inner thigh muscles and pelvic floor, this time going a bit deeper into the levator ani area. And we're also activating these gluteal muscles. These are the main stabilizers of the pelvis. So it's a bit of an all-in-one action, exhaling up, squeezing, releasing down. A great tone for the whole pelvic area, strengthening, toning, exhaling up, inhaling down. Breathing out, squeeze, and slowly coming down. Now bring your feet that little bit closer together so that they are directly underneath your knees. Don't want to have them too far apart or too close in, just directly underneath the knees. <clears throat> I always like to imagine I have two half oranges underneath the arches of the feet. And my job is to squeeze the orange juice out of the oranges. So do that now. Push your feet into the ground, squeeze the orange juice so that your bum muscles activate and you peel your pelvis up off the ground and then slowly come back down. See if you can feel like you're peeling your spine back down. So massage is right down your back. Press your orange juice, lift up, and then roll back down your spine slowly. So exhale as you come up so that we also get that synergistic effect through diaphragm and pelvic floor that stabilizes everything. And just have a nice time for a moment, rolling up and down, feeling the vertebra of the spine, creating that lovely mobilization between those vertebra and getting a bit of activation through those glutes. Up and down. And then again, press the floor away. This time just hold it here for a moment. Press the floor right down so you can feel those glutes activating. Now I'm gonna get you to roll your shoulders towards each other, a little bit closer towards each other. And either just press your hands into the ground or if you can easily interlace your hands, do so. And then press your hands and your forearms into the ground. So whichever the version you're in, start to slide your knees away from you. So you get a similar stretch to when we're on our tummy buttons and we were uh, opening up the quads. It's a similar opening sensation right through the front of your legs. Feel your bum activating, squeezing those oranges underneath your feet. Nice active feet. Now take some deep breaths in so it feels like you're expanding across your chest all the way to your shoulders. Breathing into the front of your body now, expanding, sending those knees away from you, opening the heart center. Receiving that same culpa, that intention, bringing in new vitality, kindness, joy, Clarity, whatever it is that you are bringing in your attention for this year, breathing it in and then take the hands apart, slowly draw your shoulders apart and flow down onto your mat, one vertebra at a time, really slowly, slowly, slowly here. Take your knees up, give them a big circle so it feels like you're massaging around into those hip joints, one direction, other direction. Good. Whew. Now, this is where you need your strap. So just bring one knee in for a second, stretch out the other side. We can use that again if we want to. I'm just gonna place it there. Stretching all the way out. So you're opening up the hip flexor here. See if you can pull your fingers and your toes as far away from each other as possible. Oh, that feels good. And then the other side, a bit high. Fingers and toes stretching, lengthening. That's it. And then take your strap and just hook it around the ball of your foot. So you want to press the heel away from you and then press the back of your pelvis into the ground. So we're not pulling like so to get a hamstring stretch. Instead, we're just kind of quite relaxed here. We're using the strap to draw the ball of the foot down towards us we'll get much more of a stretch if you can feel that your foot's slack here not doing much but pull the ball of your foot down and you feel your calf muscle going oh yeah 
can feel that. Now, you just energetically push out through the heel and then press the back of the pelvis into the ground. So you're expanding the stretch with your breath, sending that line of energy up and down the back of your leg into the pelvis. And then bring your other knee up, take a strap into your left hand, this is my left foot, and then take your feet and your knees apart. So we're creating a big V shape, opening up into these adductor muscles, but we always wanna keep the sacrum at the back of the pelvis nice and even. So hence having this knee up as well. Breathe out through the heel, soften your shoulders, soften your jaw. So the jaw and the pelvic floor area are deeply fascially connected. See if you can feel that connection as you release the jaw, release this deep core area, belly is soft. That's it. Exhale, do that little pelvic floor lifting up to core as you bring that knee up and then just swap sides, foot down, press out through the heel, down through the back of the pelvis. Out through the heel, down through the back of the pelvis. So we feel that wonderful kind of line of energy running up and down the leg. Try not to create any of this though. Keep the upper body nice and relaxed. As we exhale, as we soften, the body is being given the cue that it's safe to let go of accumulated tension. That's it. And then bringing this knee up, just hand on the inside of the knee, gently drawing those legs apart. Press out through the heel, and then it feels like you're putting your femur, your thigh bone, back into the pelvis. And you're pressing out through the heel, and then back, drawing that femur back in melting the shoulders into the ground, softening the belly. That's it. Just bending the knee, slide both feet into your strap now and then take your feet wide, 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 wide and then drop your knees down towards your armpits. So now you want to press this sacrum area, so the back of your pelvis down into the ground rather than letting it lift up as if your tail was trying to touch the sky. So we're pressing down into the back of the body, shoulders are loose, heels away from us, balls of the feet being drawn towards us. So baby pose, the most ungainly pose in yoga, but wonderful just for letting go of all the accumulated stuff in the pelvic floor and the pelvis. Maybe you're a little rock from side to side. Hmm. That's the way. And then just take that out to the side. I'm going to give you a twist before we come up. So knees in towards your chest. Drop the knees to one side. Let your shoulders release. Turn your head. Take a nice deep breath in. Side the breath out. And then up and over to the other side. So shoulders down, breathing in, side out. <sighs> Beautiful. Roll yourself back onto all fours. And I'm going to just take that away for a moment. Extended child pose again. Shoulders away from ears, chin tucked in, stretching the back of the body. And then coming up onto all fours as if you are in cat and cow again, lifting the sitting bones, tuck those toes, exhale down with facing dog. Feel as if your tail has been pulled up towards the interconnection between the ceiling and the wall. Keep lifting your spine and then press one heel at a time down onto the ground. So feel that lovely stretch into those calves. We've just opened them up. See if we can open them up a bit more. Dance with your feet. So come up and over on your feet. Get your ankles mobilizing. Keep rolling shoulders away from your ears. So I'm going to make my mat away from that candle. That's the way. Shoulders nice and loose. Lifting all the way up, dropping those heels down. Take a nice deep breath in. And then exhaling. Knees down, one foot in front of you. This is my left foot. And taking the hand down towards that left foot, opening the chest. Open twist, hand up towards the ceiling, shoulders sliding down your back. 
So this, again, opens up these inner thigh muscles, but also gives us a lovely releasing twist into the thoracic spine. Take this hand, give it a swish, give it a swish, give it a swish, a backward swish, and then just swapping sides, right foot forward, right hand down by the foot, opening the chest, hand up, shoulder dropping down, and a swish, and a swish, and a swish. Beautiful. Take yourself forward into a squatting position. So your feet are wide outwards, but keep your bum high so your tail is still lifting up behind you. Head is about heart height, and you either want to press your knees out with your forearms or with your elbows. So we're just creating a bit more of a stretch through those sitting bones, inner thigh muscles. Beautiful. And then bring your toes in, bend your knees and fold your tummy down. Let your head go. Give it a shake. Let your jaw be loose. Go, oh. Roll your shoulders back. Interlace your hands if you can and lift your hands up towards the ceiling. If that's not possible, hands on hips, elbows together. And just feel the weight of your head tractioning your spine here. <sighs> that's it. And then taking the hands down just above the knees. As you inhale, draw yourself into a tabletop position. So now we're opening up the back of the legs, activating the back of the body here. Chin is tucking in. Crown of the head is lengthening forward. Base the ribcage drawing in towards the spine. So this is quite an active upside down L shape. Exhale, fold yourself down. <sighs> Release. And then inhale, come back into that much stronger pose. Lifting, opening the sitting bones. Squeeze that orange juice underneath the feet. And then releasing again. <sighs> Beautiful. Come back up, but this time take the weight into your heels and then bring yourself into a chair pose. So you just need to check in with your alignment. You want to make sure that your sitting bones are sliding downwards, but they are spread apart. They're not all squeezed under like so. Knees are on top of ankles, not all the way forward like that. And counterbalancing with hands out in front of us, shoulders sliding down our backs. This is quite a strong heating pose. I'm going to turn it into a half chair to take us into 2022. So hands behind you, leaning forward, and then coming up onto your toes. Draw the base of the ribcage in. Use your back muscles. Chin is tucked in. Launching yourself forward with that intention. Strong, smooth breath. Focused breath. And then down. Let yourself be soft. Release your head. Push the floor away, slowly ripple yourself up. <sighs> Coming onto the side of your mat, soften your knees, swish your hands around, like so. Big swishes, big swishes. Letting it all go. Whew. Lovely. This just activates the central nervous system. Really nice way just to release, release. That's it. Okay, coming back for a little bit of a balance. So I need you to take your feet so that your toes are coming directly forward. Soften the knees for a moment and then push the floor away and ripple that upwards thought through your spine, right up through the crown of your head. So draw the chin in. Imagine you have a string from the crown of your head lifting you up and a string from the back of your head lifting you up. Roll one shoulder, slide it down your back. Other shoulder, slide it down your back. Now take all your weight into one leg and squeeze your thigh muscles into your thigh bone and press the floor away as if you've got that orange and you're squeezing the juice out of the orange. Hands together in that Anjali Mudra. Toe on the ground and knee out to the side. So this is our tree pose one. I want you to lift the ribs away from the pelvis as well. So this is a very lengthened out tummy we've got here. If this is comfortable for you, try challenging your balance by taking your foot up just below your knees, not on your knee, just below the knee. And if that's okay, take your ankle up, grab hold of it and place your foot right up towards the groin. And you want to push your foot into your thigh and your thigh into your foot. Same time, press your hands together at the heart center, shoulders dropping away from the ears. 
crown is lifted, and then push that foot into the ground. Imagine you're receiving energy from the earth. Those roots down into the earth are receiving energy, and you're lifting that energy up on an inhalation through your trunk, through your legs, through the torso, and then take the hands up towards the ceiling and like branches, lift and expand and open your fingers. Feel the lid of your head lifting up, opening up, maybe taking your eye gaze up. Feel like you are a conduit of energy. That intention, that sound culprit is just pulsing through you now. You are lifting the energy through your foot, right up through your body, through the crown of your head. And then drawing it back down again. Hands back into the Anjali Mudra, slowly transitioning down. Pausing for a moment in your Padasana, your mountain pose. And other side, press that foot into the ground, rooting downwards, taking your version of tree pose here. Just make sure you're not on your knee, below or above it. See if you can take your drishti, your eye gaze into the point, maybe not me, looking just down at the ground, a meter or two in front of you, softening the muscles around your eyes, and then starting to receive that energy through your foot, drawing up through your trunk, right up through into your branches, take your branches up, spreading out through your fingertips like leaves and then lifting up through the crown of your head, maybe taking the eye gaze up, using your breath to anchor you here and feeling that lovely pulse of expansive energy through every cell of your body. And if you're wavering, that's good, all good trees waver in the wind. That's it, and slowly coming back down again, drawing hands into heart center, just settling into Tadasana, taking a moment to breathe, to settle, to soften. Take those feet apart, hands on hips, roll the hips around, just loosening up those hips one more time. It's like it's an unraveling of a rope. Slow mobilization, one direction and then the other. So you can take your feet a bit wider, knees a little bit more bent, a little bit more juicy through those hips, unwinding and softening. That's it. Take yourself down, deep breath in, exhaling out. And again, push the floor away, breathing in, exhaling. This time, all the way up and then all the way down. Bring yourself forward into a full fold. Give yourself a little bit of a shake through the head, dropping down onto your knees. Take the knees quite wide, slide yourself down into that extended child pose. And then either hands out in front of you or stacking your fists, whatever feels good. And just let your forehead rest on something. So either your fists or onto the ground. And take three to five very long conscious exhalations and feel your inner thighs softening, feel your sitting bones spreading, feel any tension around the pelvis, around the belly, around your shoulders melting away now. Mm. Mm. You will slowly roll your way up. Now I'm going to invite you to either take your legs up the wall so the Bhruti Karani, or just coming to lie on your back and make yourself really comfortable. As you transition though, just give your shoulders a little release. So think about where you're going, but take one arm across the body, lock it into place, shoulder drops, you draw this across arm out, you pull this locking arm in, and just give the neck and the shoulder area a little release. Ah, breathing out. Take the arms out and then the other arm across, lock it into place like so. Head comes across towards the hands so we can get into the neck a bit more. And pull this hand out, pull this hand in. Take a nice deep breath in, side of the breath out. 
That's it. Roll those shoulders. And then coming either, like I said, hip against the wall, and then you just roll yourself down into, this is called Vipri Dikrani. It's a lovely way just to soften the body, let those legs drop into the pelvis. A really nice restorative pose. Or if you're just a Shavasana girl, give yourself lots of props. Make sure you're warm. Come and lie down on the ground. Maybe give yourself a twist just to get yourself nice and ready for Shavasana. Anything you need. And then take about a minute or so to settle into something that feels nice. Something that feels like your body is just going to go and release and relax. Wonderful, I can see that you're nice and comfortable. I'm going to get you to take a conscious breath in through the back of your nostrils, sigh the breath out. Ah, when I let go of who I am, I become what I might be. Just feel your breath starting to slide into that silk like, slow, natural breath. And taking this moment to repeat your sankalpa to yourself three times, that intention that you set at the beginning of your practice, knowing that this intention takes us into that higher vibration. It is the vibration of gratitude. It really is the foundation of bringing joy into our lives, happiness. And as you allow your body to soften now, as you feel the bones heavy into the ground, as you feel your muscles softening their grip away from your bones, and as you start to tune into that gentle rise and fall of your belly, just thinking about the year that has been and the year that could be. And a moment of prayer of gratitude. I am grateful for this beautiful day. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for all the things that have happened in my life as they've brought me to where I am today. I'm grateful for the sun even when it's not shining. I'm grateful for the air and the water and my ability to access them freely. I'm grateful for the plants, I'm grateful for the animals and my ability to see the beauty that surrounds me. I'm grateful for my family and for my friends, my ability to connect with them, even if it is just online. And I'm grateful for the opportunities in my life. I'm grateful for the adversities I have experienced and my ability to find positive lessons from them. And your Sankalpa, one more time. My mind is calm and clear. My body is relaxed and open. And just knowing that the very latest neuroscience is confirming everything that the ancient rishis know, knew when they developed these uh, sankalpa intentions, that what we think and the actions that result from our intentions create our reality. So knowing that you can create the year ahead and that it's absolutely worth taking time out just to move slowly into your stillness, reconnecting the body, the mind and the heart through your breath. The breath being the spirit, the inspiration, the bringing in of the life force. As you breathe out, 
Now feeling every last bit of tension melting away. Knowing your, your conscious relaxation creates endorphins that you thrive on. Healing endorphins. And taking your attention to the very tip of your nostrils, feeling into the coolness of the air as it slides down the back of your throat, into your lungs. Really experiencing the warmth of the breath as it leaves your body. And then opening your ears so that you feel like you are absorbing all sound around you. Feeling like you can actually feel the energy of sound going through your eardrums and into your brain. And really tune in now to the sensation of the air against any exposed skin. The sensation of any blankets or your clothing. And then the sensation of your physicality, the trillions and trillions of cells, the condensed energy that makes up this body of yours, this cloak, that you're wearing through this lifetime and just feel the weight of all these cells being supported by the ground beneath you. And then start to take deeper breaths. Start to animate these cells from the inside out. Start to let your prana, your life force, ripple down through arms and legs and into fingers and toes, right up into your brain. And just wriggle into fingers and toes. Gently move the head from side to side. Put a little smile on your face. And as you do so, just give yourself a stretch. And if you've got your legs up the wall, slowly bring them down, bend your knees. And then rolling over to one side, just give yourself a moment in that fetal position. And when you're ready, put your hands onto the ground and push the floor away so that you slowly come up and it's a very, very fluid movement. You're very aware of the water content of your body. And when you come to sit to seal our practice tonight, just make sure that the fleshy bits have been pulled out from underneath your sitting bones. Take a moment to breathe up through your spine, rearranging the alignment of your body, creating space between your shoulders and your ears and finding that sweet spot where there's no holding of your head. It's perfectly balanced on top of your spine, getting the softness of the jaw and the openness of your chest. Bring your hands out to the side, turn the palms to face the ceiling, imagining in your mind your sankalpa one more time, your intention, bringing in what it is that you need to feel more balanced, more essentially you. And as you breathe in, pull that intention up and around you, sealing it, and then pulling it down back into Anja Jali Mudra at the heart center, creating that seal right around that heart center, creating that expanded energy around your intention. And just knowing that you are part of all that is. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Namaste.